Hi, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe, and I'm here today with my partner Chris Jackson of Terrafilm Engineered Filaments. Today we're here to talk about the 3D Universe Terrafilm PLA-TPE blend. So Chris, tell us a little bit about this PLA-TPE material. Yeah, this is a really unique material. I, I, I hope uh, our viewers love the color. Um, we call this Mars Red, and that's a Pantone color. Um, and the, the cool thing is, and the reason we chose it, is because the unique thing about PLA-TPE is it has a softer feel. It's more matte finish, like a rubbery kind of material, and that's because of the TPE that's in it. Um, the TPE is a sort of a, a, a synthetic kind of rubber, uh, if you will. So it always has a little bit rougher finish. Uh, it offers impact resistance to allow you to actually create lots of different things uh, specifically around uh, the TPE part of the, the material. Um, you get a nice big rigid kind of gasket, for instance. You get uh, a softer part that has a lot of rigidity to it, but it, it, it actually can work very well. We, we've actually created a bunch of these uh, uh, gaskets for fixtures in our manufacturing mm -hmm. plant. So when we have, uh, we, we, we like to change out gaskets a lot um, just to make sure that our machines are running right. And when we do that, we, we print them. Um, yeah. And we use this material for that. Um, but that's because we needed a harder kind of finish with the gasket, and it works really well. I, I love sort of the, the Mars Red makes it kind of cool because it, it does have a, it has just a really neat little texture to the filament itself. Yeah. yeah. And, and as you said, you mentioned that it's a, a rigid gasket would be one of the uh, use cases for this. That's kind of what we printed here. And as you said, it, it does have some rigidity. It does, it's not like a rubbery print. So am I, am I correct in assuming that there's sort of a higher percentage of PLA as compared to the TPE in this material? That is correct. Okay. There is a little bit higher percentage. And, you know, um, when you think about it, a lot of our other materials, you know, we're talking uh, uh, less than 10% elongation at break. In this material, we're up around 50 to 80% elongation at break. So it is a little softer. I mean, that, you know, you're getting some more softness to it. But at the same time, you still have that little rigidity. Um, you know, it's, it, it's an interesting material because of that. And, at the, you know, the, the other thing is your, your notched eyes on that we've talked about in the past, where you're, you're looking at your break point. The notched izod is about 25% higher on this than it is in sort of tough PLA. Okay. Um, and the ABS PLA. So it's it's a it's a little stronger, not a lot stronger, but a little stronger, a little bit more forgiving and softness uh, than the others. Uh, so you're starting to get to the point where you're you know you're moving up the chain of of getting a little softer material, but it still has a lot of performance to it. And okay. Uh, we like it because of that. I, I think a lot of times you also need something that's not exactly where you know you, you're at. I want a really flexible material like a TPU, but I want uh, a really uh, softer material, but it's got to have some uh, strength, mm -hmm. and, and that's what we like about it. Okay, and and how does that uh, sort of give factor relate to the? Uh, sort of thinness of the components, for example, are, are you going to see more of that in thinner walled components of the parts as compared to thicker parts? Yeah, yeah, that's where it kind of, um, uh, you know, manufactures itself, I guess, or, or displays its, its characteristic. Because unlike this kind of gasket, we would use something in our on our um, shop floor with a gasket of, of, you know, this is a few mils thick. Yeah. And that's kind of what we do. And it has softer performance that way you can actually it's far more bendable. Okay, and, um, and yet you get a strong enough uh, material that you can print a thinner component like that without worrying about it breaking when it flexes, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, now it, it does have a little bit of a, it does have a little bit of a more break point, I guess, than uh, you know some of the other materials that are out there that are really flexible. Right. Because you know it's got some rigidity to yeah. it. Yeah. But, but still, there are applications where you don't want your gasket material to be like a a complete rubber. Yeah, right. Makes sense. So this has been pretty good um, for that perspective. I I love the matte finish that's on some of these parts that you have. It's not when it you look nice. at it, it's not real shiny, right. um, and it's uh, it, and it provides a, a, a kind of a a different look and feel for it. And you know, 
it depends on what you're trying to do. Absolutely, but yeah, I agree. It has a really nice matte finish and um, a nice quality to it that uh, you don't see in a, a typical PLA. Yeah, I, it, the, the, the other unique kind of property I would say is this, uh, that um, you get um, a little bit higher deflection temperature with this as well because mm -hmm. the TPE uh, you know, offers some of that. So where you might start getting some problems on temperature and on your normal PLA parts, uh, this is going to give you something more similar to the PLA ABS, where okay. you have a little bit more temperature capability. Um, you know, uh, some of the gasketing that we do and have this running at, it's, it's uh, withstanding temperatures of 75C, 80C. Yeah, and that actually lines up well with what I found in our testing. You know, we always run these materials through a wide range of tests to try to identify the optimal settings and what we found on this material is that anywhere in a range of 225 to 245 Celsius for the extruder temp works well. I went right in the middle with 235, found that to be sort of optimal. We used a 75 uh, degree Celsius bed temperature and so like you said you're at a bit of a higher temperature range compared to a normal PLA so it makes sense that you said it, it has a bit of a better temperature resistance. Um, I also used the Magigu uh, original formulation with this. I found that that gave us nice bed adhesion. So I was able to print these parts without using any kind of a brim or a raft or anything. It just stuck nicely to the bed without any warping. Comes right off the build plate when it cools. So uh, that worked quite nicely. Yeah, and I, I think that's great because some of the other materials that are out there that, that offer some flexibility uh, do have a tendency to either stick or warp, and you, you kind of you, you walk in a fine line when you're looking at materials like that. But I, I just love how this performs. Uh, but it's got to be the right application. It's not for everything, and it's not for every day. But yeah. it's 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 for the right application. Exactly. Well, it was another great material to work with. I hope you guys will check this out. Visit us at shop3duniverse.com to learn more about this material or pick up a spool. I hope you'll follow our YouTube channel to see more videos like this. Thanks for joining me today, Chris. Thanks, Jeremy.